Hi everyone, I'm Brad Hole. I'm an attorney with Hickey and Hole Law Partners. The other day I did a video covering a new law that was um, involving temporary guardianships and how parents can appoint temporary guardians in the event of their death. It got me thinking that it'd probably be helpful to highlight more of these new laws. I know that even practicing law, I am not able to keep up with every single new law that's passed without literally going into the legislative summary and reviewing it piece by piece. So I think that there are some laws that are relevant that may apply to your everyday life that, that you don't even know about. And I thought it'd be helpful to highlight some of those. So I'm gonna do a series of videos, three or four of these at a time. We'll cover them briefly, just let you know what they are. And of course, if you want any more information about them, look them up, give us a call. We can talk about it further. First one I have here is Act 703. This is one that I think a lot of people might like, uh, which what it does is it makes, authorizes, I should say, restaurants and certain restaurants to sell alcoholic beverages through delivery and takeout services. As it's explained in the bill, COVID had an impact that affected the service industry and the current laws generally prohibit industries from selling and delivering products like alcoholic beverages through delivery or takeout. The governor had an executive order that helped with this and that flexibility helped a lot of restaurants stay in business. Uh, that executive order could expire so they passed a law and this law has some restrictions on it that are notable. It only allows the permit holder and not third parties to deliver alcoholic beverages. It only applies with the purchase of food. Uh, it only applies in a wet county or area. It does not apply to private clubs or restaurant owners located in a dry area. And then there's some other more specific details. Generally speaking though, uh, it does authorize the sale of alcohol with food from restaurants through delivery and takeout, something that was not legal before. Our next one that we have is at 1052. This is regarding landlord tenant issues. If you have rental property, you definitely want to be aware of this. You probably have already been notified, I, I would hope, but if you haven't, definitely pay attention to this one. What it does is after November 1st, 2021, any lease or rental agreements <clears throat> entered after that date for residential property there will be implied residential quality standards. These are somewhat like a warrant of habitability um, that, that applies in some other areas. The, there are six things listed here that you will have to have. One is an available source of hot and cold running water. Two is an available source of electricity. Three, a source of potable drinking water. Four, a sanitary sewer system and plumbing that conform to applicable building and housing codes, five, a functioning roof, and six, a functioning heating and air conditioning system. To the extent a heating and air, condi air conditioning system served the premises at the time the landlord and tenant entered into the lease or rental agreement. Important to note on this, there, there's a mechanism laid out in this statute as to how any failures of this need to be reported and how the landlord should respond. The more important note here, I think, is that if a landlord fails to remedy this situation, the tenant is not allowed to just not pay rent, but they could terminate the rental agreement early. There's also just worth noting that there are some somewhat minor changes to the eviction proceedings also included in this act. So you, you probably want to check those out as well. Okay, the next one we have here, Act 570. I don't want to go too deep into this and get into the background information, but if you have a beneficiary deed, if you know what that is, if, if it is something that applies to you or you have a deed in place that passes a property either to you or you are passing property to someone else through a beneficiary deed, important to note that this act has made it so that, generally speaking, a claim for reimbursement by federal or for federal or state benefits, you know, that you'll often see through 
DHS are not um, allowed any longer by the statute to a grantee of a beneficiary deed. So beneficiary deeds can protect that property from those claims, generally speaking, through this act. All right, Act 828. Okay, this one is a notice requirement, and it's a notice requirement that when an owner, operator, lessee, or administrator of a child care facility is married to a sex offender, which includes some level two sex offenders and all level three or level four sex offenders, they must provide notice to the parent or the guardian or a person standing in for a parent of a child who attends that child care facility that one, they are married to a sex offender and two, the sex offender will not be present on the premises of the child care facility while children are present. So not just if someone is working there, of course, that'd be a problem, but if they're married to someone that will also need to be given notice of. That's all I have for this video. We'll cover some more in future ones. If you have any thoughts or, or questions about it, feel free to let us know. Definitely look at Google and you might find some more information on them. And if you have any other laws or something that you'd like to see me cover or address, feel free to shoot me a message on it and we'll see about doing that in the future. Thanks.